Hi everyone, Dave here. Today I'm testing a UPS or uninterruptible power supply that contains a lithium iron phosphate battery. After years of replacing lead acid batteries in my uninterruptible power supplies or UPSs every year, I kept wondering why LifePo4 batteries are not more common in UPS applications. Please note I do not accept commissions for product reviews and GoldenMate provided this UPS for testing. This UPS has a pure sine wave inverter and 800 watt output and it weighs about 12 pounds. The lithium iron phosphate or LIFEPO4 battery pack is 8 cells in series and it's about 24 volts, has a bit over 200 watt hours of storage. In theory it's enough to get your computer hibernated or shut down cleanly and safely if there's a power issue. If you have a laptop or very small computer, perhaps you could continue operating for an hour or two from the battery power. A UPS is supposed to sit in between computer equipment and AC mains power and quickly step in to supply backup power when there is a surge or power interruption. It provides temporary mains power so you can keep working or shut down properly. A UPS can protect sensitive computers and equipment and save your computer from resetting and losing what you are working on at the moment of a power interruption. The most obvious question I have is does it work? Let's get right to the point. I'm going to plug in two computers and a Wi-Fi router, let the UPS charge up, then I will yank the cord and see what happens. Either it works or it doesn't. A UPS must have very fast reaction times or it just doesn't work properly. Computers in particular and related equipment are sensitive to power brownouts and interruptions. If anything goes wrong, they tend to switch off or crash. Let's take a look at the product page for the UPS. It's rated at 1000 VA or 800 watts. I wouldn't really want to put 800 watts through this thing. Uh, running a desktop computer and a Wi-Fi router for a few minutes really shouldn't require 800 watts. But it's nice to know that the maximum capability is 800 watts. 5000 cycles. LCD display panel on the front, which is pretty neat. There's a picture of the display panel. And they're hinting that it could be used for probably other things like running a CPAP machine or a breathing machine. Actually, that would probably be one potential use case for it. Four outlets, 515P, 15 amp outlets. And it does say it carries some Yale certifications on the battery. So the battery itself is carrying these certifications here. Let's check those out. At least one of those certifications is a Yale certification here. This is a certification that's provided by the Underwriters Laboratory. And in order to, as far as I know, in order to check those, you need to search in their database to see if the products is listed. As far as I can tell, they do appear to have a Yale listing, so that's good. Sometimes I just check to see if they actually have it, and it appears that they do. And here's a list of the battery packs or components that they have certified. So very good. Unfortunately, I have not found a convenient way to search the UL database. So I'll just use the information that GoldenMate provides on their website. On the GoldenMate website, there is a specifications list. And I noticed that the AC input voltage is 90 to 140 volts. Therefore, my hope is that this UPS will actually be able to convert the voltage if it goes too low or too high but hopefully that feature is included. And it seems like they're indicating here that it is. It also has a pure sine wave output, which is excellent. You don't want to have a UPS with a modified square wave or square wave output. It's just not a good idea. It's better to have a pure sine wave output. 89% efficiency, it has a fan in it. And it says at 400 watts, it can run 30 minutes, that's fine. They also list the harmonic distortion at less than or equal to 5%. I assume they mean total harmonic distortion of the inverter output. And so it'd be interesting to know exactly what that figure is, but I'm sure it's good enough for UPS backup. And conversion time, less than 20 milliseconds, I believe that means transfer time, so how long does it take to react to a power outage? And that's just a guess on my part, but I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Okay, let's go ahead and test this UPS and see what it can do. Now this company does pride itself in quality, and they have a lot of certifications and certificates, and the unit does look... I must say it looks fairly well put together. This would fit really well on like a equipment rack or a shelf because it's rectangular. I really like that. They rounded the corners, but it's still a rectangular form factor and, and that's really what it needs to be. Eventually this is probably going to be on some kind of equipment shelf, but for right now I'm going to test it on my workbench. In order to test this unit I have to power it on. Just to be clear, a UPS, uninterruptible power system, is designed to sit between your AC mains power and your computer equipment and Wi-Fi router. That way, if the power goes out, it'll keep working. It also protects the computer from data corruption if it powers off suddenly. My workshop here is running off of batteries, solar panels, and inverters. It's an off-electrical grid system. However, it's the exact same thing. If my inverter goes down, this UPS would step in and keep my computer equipment running until I'm able to intervene. 
The first test I'm going to perform is I'm going to use a computer. This is actually a server. It's a mini server and it's running a basically an information technology software package and it's very sensitive to power interruptions so it is an ideal test for this UPS system. Okay I just plugged in the UPS to my AC mains power and it says 25 watts. The battery is kind of like not completely full but it's not empty either. Alright let's see what this does. Let's go ahead and push the power button. The beeping sound is not too loud so that's nice. I heard a relay click. 117 volts AC input, 117 volts AC output. Very nice. Actually, I really like the display. 117 volts in, 116 volts, and 117 volts out. It shows the battery status. 15 watts, I assume, is charging the battery because it isn't full. Very interesting. It's also interesting to see that the battery must be charging at around 15 watts. That's, uh, that's interesting to know. Just to explain part of the test setup, I've got my server here, it's currently powered off. I've got a miniature LCD monitor, and that's all plugged into the UPS. The UPS in turn is plugged into my AC mains power coming from my off electrical grid system. I'm going to test multiple devices here, but I think this monitor would be interesting to plug in to see if it flickers. And this machine here is going to be running a very sensitive server application, and it would be very sensitive to power outages or any kind of problems with the AC mains power. I'm going to add some other items too, but let's start with this. Now let's explain something else about computer equipment. Typically they have a switch mode power supply. This particular computer or server has an external power brick. However, it's the exact same type of power supply that you would find in a normal server or computer. Now a switch mode power supply like this could tolerate a little bit of power interruption, maybe the slightest bit, for just a little tiny bit of time, but not very much. Something like this is not going to protect you from any real power outage. It's going to be really obvious whether this UPS works or not because I'm going to pull the power all of a sudden and we're going to see whether its switching capability is fast enough. Who knows, there's only one way to find out. I'm going to get this server up and running and I'm going to yank the plug and we'll see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and power up the server. Okay, there's a blue light so that means it's coming on. It's going to take a while before the monitor starts reacting. It's booting up. What I'm using here to test with is called VMware. It's a really older version of VMware, but it doesn't matter. It's still a valid test. And I'm currently testing to see whether this server here can tolerate a power interruption now that I have the UPS. So let's find out. There's only one way to find out. And just to show that the system is running, there's the screen. It's really hard to see because it's a small monitor, but I just want to show that it is booted up and it is running. This is not a desktop computer. It's a really old uh, server environment, but it's good enough for the test. Okay, there's what the output looks like on an oscilloscope. It is more or less a sinusoidal waveform, and it looks a little bit different at the peaks, as you can see. Now, I'm not terribly worried about that, but let's go ahead and do a test and just see how it performs. Okay, you can see the uh, server's running. Here's the oscilloscope. The blue light means it's powered on, and here's the screen of the UPS itself. What I'm going to do off screen is I'm going to yank the power cord for this UPS. Basically, we can keep it on the screen there, that power light, this waveform, and the screen on the UPS and see what happens. All right, I'm ready to yank the power. Let's go ahead and do that. And you saw it right there. There was just a little bit of an interruption, but nothing really happened. I mean, the computer is still running. Yep, it's still running. It didn't even blink. Okay, so it really didn't get too excited over that. It doesn't seem to be very challenged by my test, so that's good. Let's wait a while and see what happens here. You can see on the left here, 24 watts, 14 watts out, but no AC input. That's what's going into the inverter. The reason it blinked out there is it has a screen saver. It does not mean it's turned off, it just periodically blinks out the screen, I guess to save the monitor or something like that. It's handling the outage just fine. I've pulled the power. Okay, it's been running the load for a little while, and basically there's no drama. It just works, it does what it's supposed to do, and that's a good thing. All right, let's go ahead and restore the power and let's see what happens. Hopefully nothing too fancy. Hopefully it just works. All right, there's a delay. Okay, here a relay click. Yeah, okay, there's a delay. It doesn't turn on right away and believe it or not, that's exactly what you want. It's called hysteresis and you don't want this UPS to instantly go back on domain's power if it comes back on because what can happen is it comes on and goes right back off and it could crash your system. It did exactly what I would like it to do. It waited a while. Then I heard the relay click and 
there's no drama, it just works. Now that I have done the first small test, I'm going to do a bigger test. Now I have a Wi-Fi router plugged in. You cannot see the light very well, but it's on. I have the same server plugged in. Got the oscilloscope. It's currently on mains power and it's charging. So it's operating the way it should. But I've also plugged in my camera lighting. You can actually see that right there. Not that camera lighting is really a proper thing to attach, but I'm just trying different loads to get an idea for what this UPS can handle and what it can't. If the light flickers, I know there's a problem. And I've also plugged in my editing computer, which is out in the workshop. And I don't want that to crash because I have a lot of things that are open and I want to keep it the way it is. So I'm kind of taking a risk here, but let's see what happens. Okay, keep an eye on the camera lighting, which you can definitely tell if that goes off, it's going to be obvious. And then I'll take the camera and show you the desktop as well to see if that's crashed. Okay, here goes. I'm going to yank the power right now. I heard a beep and I heard a click. Got the green blinking light. Uh, the waveform looks just fine. Wi-Fi router has not crashed. The server has not crashed. Yep, it's still alive. It hasn't even blinked. Yeah, so that is actually pretty impressive. The camera light did not blink, and everything seems to be working fine. So I really don't have any concerns about the switching time on this UPS. It's obviously got it covered. It's obviously very fast. We're talking milliseconds, and that is enough to protect pretty much any ordinary computer from a power outage or a blip. And it's adequate for my needs, and I really don't have any complaint there. But let's try returning to mains power again and keep an eye on the delay for switching back. I just want to pay a little more attention to that and see how much time it actually takes. I'm curious how many seconds it is before it switches back to AC power. So let's go ahead and plug it in. It's in. I'm going to say something like five seconds. So five seconds of hysteresis means that this UPS is smart enough. If the power comes on and then goes back off again, it will hopefully avoid that and hopefully avoid crashing your equipment. Okay, so what do I think about this UPS so far? In my opinion, it has earned the title of UPS. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It does not do it with any drama. It does have a beeper in there, but it's not really terribly loud. And really, I want a beeper. I want to know when this unit has gone online. It's just loud enough to get my attention, but not terribly loud. I like the display. It tells me what's going on. It's really, really blatantly obvious if this thing has gone into battery mode or not, because this part here on the left will change and you'll just see the wattage. And it's nice to see the little status bar there showing I have some power left in the battery and how much power you're actually consuming at the outlet and how much power is going into the system overall. This is really nice to get this kind of information. Further testing took place in my home data center. I run very small servers to host web applications, backups, and file shares on my home network. Even though I have batteries and solar power, once in a while these servers get crashed and reset. For example, if I pull the wrong cord. With a UPS in between, my servers are well protected, giving me plenty of time to correct any power issue. Basically, this GoldenMate UPS aims to solve a common problem. Lead acid batteries have to be replaced constantly. A lithium iron phosphate battery should last many times longer and have better performance. After seeing the GoldenMate UPS actually working, I will recommend it. There is a product link in the description if you want to check it out. To avoid bias, I don't accept sales commissions. I hope this review was informative and helpful to you. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.